Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Palette and I'm back again today with a very new exciting tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at accessibility, which is one of the most fundamental concepts of UI design. So without any further ado, let's get started. In front of me, what I have is an article which says the Supreme Court hands victory to blind man who sued Domino's over site accessibility. So basically what happened is there was a man who was blind and he tried to order pizza from the Domino's website, but unfortunately was not able to uh, because Domino's had not made its product, the website or the app accessible to anybody who has a disability such as blindness and so he sued the government he sued dominos and the supreme court um you know ruled in favor of the blind man and dominos had to you know undergo a penalty now is this even possible somebody suing a company because they're not able to order from the web from a website or a digital product. Yes, there are rules, there are laws that define accessibility. So I leave a link in the description below which talks about this. And in this video, we're not gonna talk about blind people, rather we're gonna talk about colorblind people who do not see colors as it is. And if your colors that you use in your websites or apps are not accessible enough and create a lot of issues for the user, then you might be in serious trouble because the user has the right to go ahead and sue you and your company and you might incur a lot of penalty and losses, all right? So you can go ahead and read out this entire article. There's a little bit of uh, information that the CEO also talks about. Um, it's a sim pretty small article and you can see that Domino's, you know, stock, uh, you know, also fell, the stock market. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and go to read about it. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So. Yeah, now let's get into Figma and see how this actually works. As you can see, I have this snippet which I pulled out from Material Design Guidelines and this is not actually by Material Design. There is this organization called as the W3C as you can see it mentions over here. It says that the, the W3C recommends the following contrast ratio for body text and image text, all right? So basically any element or any text I would say which has a background, you know, which is sitting on a background has to satisfy these two contrast ratios, all right? Now I picked this up from material guidelines because material design guidelines, you know, explained it pretty nicely. You can check it out. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. So basically even if you're designing for iPhones or you know you're using the human interface guidelines they have to pass the contrast ratio and we're going to take a few examples um, and explain how this works. So basically you need to take a look at the text all right. So large text at 14 points bold weight or 18 points regular weight and up and graphics and these graphics could be things like icons has to pass a ratio of 3 to 1 ratio against the background and for smaller text which is basically lesser than 14 points bold or lesser than 18 points regular have to meet a contrast ratio of 4.5 is to 1. Now what is points and what is pixels that's a totally different discussion but for the sake of simplicity there's a small formula where you can translate these 14 points two pixels and the calculated pixel value is 18.5 pixel bold or 24 pixel regular, all right? It's from 14 point bold, it becomes 18.5 pixel bold and from 18 points regular, it becomes 24 pixels regular, all right? So this is basically the contrast ratio um, and the font sizes that, you know, have to be met, all right? So let's actually take an example and see how this works, all right? So down below, um, I'm not sure if you have heard of this app called Splitwise, but Splitwise is an app that does not meet the contrast ratios at all, all right? And it is so sad that this is such a popular app and a lot of people use it, it does not meet the contrast ratio. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've just taken a couple of the texts, all right? And I've also pulled out the, um, you know, the background color and the font size as well. And we're gonna test if these meet the contrast ratios, all right? So let's take a look at the first one. All right, so this is 24 pixel bold, all right? So let's go up and see. So 24 pixel bold is more than 18.5 pixel bold and that means it needs to meet a 3.3 is to one uh, contrast ratio, all right? So what I'm gonna do is check that. Now this color is white, all right? So there are a lot of contrast 
color checkers online. And this is one that I regularly use. Uh, there are also a lot of Figma plugins and Adobe XD plugins and Sketch plugins which you can use. Uh, and there are tons of contrast uh, ratio, uh, color checkers, contrast ratio checkers. We're gonna take a look at this one also. This is much more interesting. We'll get, we'll get to this in a bit. But for now, we'll just focus on this. So the foreground color is gonna be white. So I'm just gonna change that all the way to white. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and choose this color, which is basically this background color. I'm just gonna copy that, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in the background color and hit enter. All right, so as you can see, it has a contrast ratio of 2.26 is to one, and as you can see, it fails all these accessibility guidelines. So what is actually AA and AAA and AA and AAA? These depend on the font size. So it's quite complicated and it's really not a necessity uh, to understand both of these, but I will leave a link in the description for an article which explains more about this. But anyway, AAA actually is for, for this large text, all right? And it's it has to meet a 3.1, three is to one um, ratio against the background. And AA is actually for 4.5 is to one. That's basically the gist of it. But ideally, forget about AA and AAA. If your font size is 18.5 pixel bold or 24 pixel, it has to meet 3.3 is to one ratio. And in this case, it clearly is not, all right? So that's a big no-no. Let's take a look at another one. All right, so we've got another text and this is 16 pixels. And again, the same background color. And so obviously since this is white, it's not definitely not going to meet the contrast ratio. Let's take a look at this one, all right, which is kind of like a gray version, all right? And I've gone ahead and pulled that color. So I'm gonna copy this, and this is gonna be my foreground color, all right? And you can see the contrast ratio reduces even further, which is 1.61 is to one ratio, which is really bad. Let's take a look at another example where we have some green text, all right, on a gray color background. So I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna to go to the foreground and I'm gonna paste this color, all right? And we're gonna go and pick this color, which is basically like a gray color, copy that, and this is the background, all right? Now, this also does not meet the contrast ratio at all. So basically, the whole app of Splitwise does not meet contrast ratio, which is you know kind of really bad, all right? So. Let's see how we can solve this. So I've actually been working on a big redesign project for Splitwise. It's a personal project. I'll probably have information about this, uh, you know, coming soon uh, in a couple of weeks. But anyway, um, this is the color that I'm using to replace that green color that we have. Now this, if we copy this color, all right, and I paste it in the background color, all right, uh, and we need to make sure that the foreground color, which is the text is uh, supposed to be white. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this white. You can see that it passes the contrast ratio of three is to one and 4.65 and 4.5 is to one. So basically this is actually 17 pixels, all right? So what does 17 pixels mean? 17 pixels comes under the small text category because it is less than 24 pixel value and 18.5 pixel bold value, anything below that. And this is 17, so this clearly passes the 4.5 is to one ratio, all right? So that's excellent. All right, so now let's move into this part of the tutorial where this website talks not only about the contrast ratio, but also how the text looks for people with different types of color blindness, all right? So this is basically the population and this is the vision type. So People with normal vision are 68% and this is how it looks for them. But people who have troubling with, people who have trouble distinguishing reds or can't see red at all, this is how it kind of looks for them. Now, while this does work very well, like I'm able to clearly differentiate the text and the background, the problem is if you have multiple colors on the same interface, it can be hard to distinguish what is what. And so I might have a black color background and a black color and a white color text or a red color background, and it might look different and I might not be able to distinguish it. So you always want to take all the colors and put it in this ratio and check if there is clear distinction between two colors, all right? So let's actually take a look at the original one and see how that looked, all right? So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna paste that. Now, as we clearly saw before this clearly, you know, uh, fails the color blindness test. But if you see over here, it's very hard to differentiate the background from the text. And even though this is really bad, if you pair this up with multiple colors, let's say you have two colors on the interface, let's say like a red and a green or a blue and a green, it's really gonna be very hard to differentiate what is what, all right? 
And you can see that, you know, in direct sunlight, how it looks like it's impossible to even read how it is. And even though everybody does not have disability, even if you're not able to read under a sunlight, you must consider yourself to be a person with disability. It's not something that you have, but it's something that is implied because you're in a situation that has created that sense of disability. All right. So make sure that all your colors are past the contrast ratio and, you know, check them before you implement it into the design and, you know, you bring it out to users or else you might end up facing a lot of issues. Now, there are a lot of cases where people have sued companies because of accessibility and this is a design issue. So as a designer, it's your job to take care of this. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content and I'll see you guys in the next video. So take care and bye-bye.